Scruff of the Neck TV on your Monday night. Abby McCarthy with you. And next is an artist I think is going to go stratospheric very soon. So I'm glad that he's hanging out on the show tonight. Please welcome Keen to Crow. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for that introduction. I think that's true. I don't know how you do that without messing up. I'd be so nervous to <laughs> say the wrong thing. I was mostly nervous about saying your name. Yeah, that's a classic one that everybody yeah, gets wrong. I can imagine. How would you say it? Kian Ducrow. There you go. My mom would tell me to say Ducrow. That's yeah. That's what I was thinking. Do I need to, you know, flex my French? I don't think so. No. I don't think we'll have that. Doesn't going. sound very good in like a Kent accent. I don't think I can. You can try uh, carry it if you want. <laughs> I'm happy to hear your attempt, but I think it's too challenging for everybody else. Now you have had an amazing couple of years. So so much to talk about. But as always, I'll be taking questions from Twitch. So if you've got a question for Kian, get involved. The more scandalous, the better. Absolutely. Get involved right now. Um, now, has music always been your dream? Like from from the start, were you kind of like yeah, out of the sure. womb? Give me the mic, yeah. let's go. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> in, yeah, I, there was nothing else really. I loved acting, I love acting, I love skateboarding, mm -hmm. but I think it was just like I always kind of I was born into it. Like, my mom was touring when she was pregnant with me, and then when I was born, she had me backstage. Like, everyone thought she was crazy, but like, so for me, it was just like, oh, yeah, obviously, I'm gonna do music, and I, I'd never loved anything as much as music, so performing, being on stage. So you've come from a musical family then? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Packed. So, so you were like on tour with your mum, that's awesome. <laughs> well, I, was like, I wasn't really <laughs> conscious, like I was like newborn, but I was yeah in a pram and she was breastfeeding me while she was out on stage playing concerts and then she'd go back out and like in the interval. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean like... You're cool. Yeah, I'm so lucky in that respect that I just kind of grew up around classical music actually because that's yes. what they did, but it was, yeah, super... Super lucky. Yeah, because I didn't realise this, but I was obviously stalking you earlier, you know, researching, you should say. Classic. Um, and you studied at the Royal Academy of Music, darling. Just about, like. Yeah, but then you thought, <laughs> actually, maybe this isn't for me. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously I love classical music and it's what I just did, like, my whole life. And I did everything else, like, you know, musical theatre, pop music, all that. But I always mm. studied classical music and I just, you know, I wanted to just keep going as long as I could and to learn as much as I could. And then it just kind of like, I'd always fantasized about dropping out of college and being like John Mayer who dropped out of Berkeley and like moved to LA <laughs> and signed a record deal. I used to always watch his interview and be like, oh, that'd be, that'd be so class. Imagine doing that. Like, And I, for some reason, just thought that I couldn't do that. And then one day it just clicked and I was like, oh yeah, I'm just going to leave. I'm going to do that. Go head first. And, and I, I did that. So <laughs> somehow it like worked. I don't know. But yeah, it's mad. Yeah, I would say it worked. Yeah. Yeah. It's work <laughs> working. Well enough, like. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. So when would your first gig have been then? Would it have been quite young? Um, first gig, like, does that mean, like, just performance in general or, like... Yeah, let's go with performance in general first. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, so I was, like, in a stage school when I was, like, four years old. <laughs> so, like, yeah, probably. When I was, I'll say when I was, like, four, probably, oh, wow. was my first time on stage. And then, stage. like, first proper gig. Or like an open mic night or something like that, maybe. Uh, well, I mean, I performed cla like big, big classical concerts or like, you know, big orchestra stuff, tours and things like that. And then like a lot of big like theatre stuff in Ireland. And then, so that would have been like, but I think first like proper gig on my own, maybe like, I mean, weirdly comes to mind like my school talent show or something. <laughs> Probably <laughs> something like that, like singing my own song. I think the first yeah. time I like actually like sang one of my own songs live before I was like gigging in pubs and stuff was like at a school talent show. So yeah, there you go. That's oh, that's pretty cool. Love that. And now your TikTok has definitely been livening up my lockdown. And I think lots of people's generally it's a lot of fun. Um you're mostly sharing things that you've learned about the girls that you've lived with. About about girls in general and a lot of it is spot on, I have to say. You changed you, earlier. You're like some of it's oh, pretty good. So, some, like, of it. some of it. I've worked yeah, hours right, on that. All of it. I just didn't want to. You know, keeps <laughs> me up at night thinking of those. No, I mean, yeah, it was just like it all actually started when I went to LA in February, like not one that's just gone, but the year before that, mm -hmm. just before lockdown, and started just like talking about weird things in America, like off the cuff, and that just somehow 
people found it funny me walking up to a mirror and saying weird things and there's a lot of weird <laughs> things about America that I just wasn't like you know like their butter's white and all that kind of stuff mm. um, and so I started talking <laughs> about that and then I guess when I left America I was like oh I can't there's like nothing funny that I can talk about like that anymore because like there's nothing that weird about England that like for me you know and then I guess I was like what's another funny unique situation I'm in and then you know, I was like, oh, I live with two girls. And I think it was one of the girls that I lived with or my manager or someone that was like, it'd be funny if you told, talked about the things that you learned. <laughs> and I was kind of like starting to like post stuff of us anyway. So I was like, and then I just genuinely started like learning loads of really hilarious things. And I was just like, you know, f- you know, when you're experiencing it, you're like, is it just the girls that I live with who do these hilarious things no. or things that I've <laughs> never known or real? And then it was, and I was like, yo, what's the story with like, eating hummus and cereal all the time like for your dinner <laughs> and then turns out like that's like a common thing or whatever and that is a thing and what was the one i was watching the other day and it was just like you were like why do girls always make this noise oh. it's like oh uh, that i was like noise. i do that all the time <laughs> that just, noise just around my like flat <laughs> the bane of my existence no it's hilarious but it's like it's like not even it's not even 7 30 a.m and it's like oh worst day ever it's like the heart you wouldn't even get it if i told you i'm like you're literally not even out of bed yet how, have you had the, how are you complaining it's just uh, i mean it's amazing like i i'm so lucky to have lived with like the most amazing girls and like my girlfriend now and like it's all like very light-hearted and i think women are obviously incredible so i just like <laughs> take the piss when i can because i don't know it's funny yeah it's good fun i like it now, as well as blowing up online, you've also signed to Billie Eilish's record label, Darkroom Records, which is... Yes. Does that still, like, does that feel real? Even me saying it out loud? Like, has it set in yet? That's <laughs> so weird. Like, it's, it's mad, isn't like, it? <laughs> Luke is doing a little... Uh, it actually, actually is ridiculous. Like, it still doesn't feel... I haven't, you know, I haven't even met, like, anybody from the label in America and, like... Mm-hmm. You know, I've met people here from the partner label and stuff like that, but I haven't like it was a Zoom signing and it was of like it, was. Very, very it doesn't feel it just honestly like I watch Billy Eilish's documentary and I see like the people on my team mm. just in every scene of this documentary. I'm like, those are the guys. That's the girl. <laughs> That's the person. Like, what? It's crazy. It doesn't. It doesn't feel. Even you saying it now, I'm like, I forget that Wait, it's me? like me. I feel <laughs> yeah. like I'm just like observing my. You know. Yeah. My my life, but actually, like I am, I am the person sitting on this couch that you're sitting on. It's kind of weird. <laughs> so great, an amazing team and, and label to be a part of, and they always put the artists first, don't they? And they're really all about artists that that do things themselves. So, I mean, it is the perfect partner for you, isn't it? It just, yeah, what an amazing yeah. team. It's, I mean, that it was like. I remember asking my brother actually like what I should do, like where I should sign, like who I should like, you know, and it's so hard over Zoom talking mm-hmm. to record labels and stuff. And like, he was just like, all that matters is the music, man. Yeah. Like, Cause my brother is a, a professional classical musician. He's like, you know, one of my biggest sort of idols. And I just like everything, I just like look for his approval. And I think mm-hmm. he just said to me like, all that matters is that you can keep making where, where are you going to be allowed to keep making the music you want to make yeah and and stay like, authentic and you, you know true to your yeah to your and image. that was that was their thing they were like listen like you just make the music and then we'll just you know help you push it out to more people basically yeah that's so exciting now what i love about your music is you manage to distill really like personal often quite difficult situations in great detail just perfectly in songs so thank you for that. Um, thank you. I'm glad that you think that. <laughs> that means a lot to me, yeah. And I think that's why people connect so deeply with your songs. But has music always been an outlet for you, quite a cathartic experience? Um, I mean, like, songwriting, music, like, songwriting is, like, definitely something that I'm constantly working on. And I kind of, like, I always just, like, wanted to make the best music I could make and I'm still mm-hmm. kind of always like striving to do that And but it's definitely something that's you know probably quite therapeutic sometimes you can say things that you can't get out in your own words or that yeah. like you can't express without like notes and melodies and like funnily enough like I've always been most attracted to and, and drawn to like harmony and, and, and melody and rhythm and, and the focus on like lyrics and cohesiveness of words and making sense in your songs came a bit later like I was always writing about something but mm-hmm. I you know it 
came later on, I think, that I really started to focus on what I was saying. And the easiest mm -hmm. way that I found my way around that was just like by saying really what I meant, like mm. just saying what I wanted to say. And because there's so many amazing songwriters out there who like read, you know, dictionaries and millions of books. <laughs> and like I can't compete with people who have like the best English literature under their belts and mm. I was like what can I do I can talk for a pretty long time <laughs> um so I guess if I just like write like how I talk I should be I should be grand so yeah you know, it works out yeah that definitely time. comes across your your honesty and your vulnerability and it's amazing that you find that easy because I, I don't think all artists do a lot of the time it's like writing about something through you know another character or uh, you, you know just kind of disguising it in some way but it feels like you literally just put your your kind of heart on the line a lot of the time yeah i mean i think there's like um, a couple of like reasons to why i do that that i'm conscious of mm -hmm. and um you know one thing is like being conscious of like having written with a lot of people who don't want to say what they actually want to say or mm. what they feel and it would almost aggravate me like writing for others and then being like yeah that but I don't really want to say that so then I would go home and be like god I just want to like why don't people just want to <laughs> say what they want to say and yeah and then I think the stuff of like saying things that's other people might find difficult to say I, I actually had no idea that I was doing that until I started having interviews where people would ask me about that often or people would mention that in my music. And I'm like, really? Is nobody, nobody else is saying this? Or like people find it this hard? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm like very like open book, like no mm. filter, in incredibly emotional and also like raised by like my mom. So it's very mm. like just super emotional and she's French and it's just very like, so I just grew up <laughs> that way. Just being like, you know, just to the point, very open about how I feel and mm. yeah. Because you're so open, you must get a lot of messages from people just saying how much your music has helped them. Because big subject matters on yeah. some of your tunes, you know, and people must be like, you've just said what I've been through. Yeah, it's definitely something, I think, probably the most incredible feeling and probably one of the reasons that I do it um, mm. and that it, I can continue to do it every day is... Like, even if it's, you know, one message that I read and, and, you know, I get it quite a lot because of the kind of music that I make. But mm -hmm. that feeling of, you know, somebody reaching out to you and, and telling you that, you know, they haven't cried in like a year. And the first time they cried was because they listened to your music and they were finally able to like, you know, deal with something traumatic in their life mm -hmm. or, you know, that you just like help them through like an entire breakup or like things that just like and I read it and I'm like that's just not true like that's lies like there's, <laughs> why don't you go listen there, there's plenty of other people you could be listening to that would help you through that but like yeah I mean it's I'm just writing like what I experienced in my breakups and my and I try mm. to just be like very I'm so opinionated about things and I think sometimes it can be bad like I will <laughs> share my opinion and get in so much trouble but I think when I put that in my music like people find it just I guess quite honest and refreshing mm. and I almost say what people are thinking but don't want to you know don't want to say so mm -hmm. when you hear it you're like yeah sometimes love isn't enough like that's how I mm. feel like you know I love my ex but maybe it wasn't like good enough or whatever I don't know whatever they relate to yeah it. and I yeah I think it probably but yeah I don't know where I'm, I'm going with this but it's a it's the most amazing feeling ever to have somebody tell you like how much your music means to them mm. and, and you're just like I made this in my bedroom like on my laptop and you like cry to it every night it's crazy yeah and your new track crocodiles is an interesting one all about a toxic friendship there's not many songs about friendship that actually isn't great so i think it's important that that you've done this tell us about making this track because it's yeah another honest one isn't it yeah so like crocodiles came about from like yeah, a real life situation that happened to me where like i was just like so hurt by friends and mm. and it was one of my kind of first times like really standing back and being like whoa like this hurts so much and mm. like uh, I, I you know I didn't really think about writing it until um I was kind of like you know a, a bit away from it and <clears throat> I like actually traveled to LA and I, I met a friend who I actually, funny enough, he's from Cork City and we literally never met, like, the same town that I grew up in and he's a musician, oh, which is very rare. And yeah. anyway, we met there and it's the first song we wrote on the first day that we ever met. Wow. We just kind of sat down and, and we just wrote the song called Crocodiles and it was literally, like, 
it's funny actually because I think like I was writing it with an uh, amazing songwriter called Bill Mabry and he had no idea I think while we were writing it that I was completely writing from my own experience oh, right. and after we'd finished it he was like oh, like we love the song he was like who do you think like this could be good for because I think he didn't want to put the pressure of like let's write a song for you so yeah, we just yeah. kind of wrote a song and I was like I was like oh this is very like I mean I just this is my this is me like, I just <laughs> wrote like my story. I just to- I was literally just writing about what happened to me like two months ago and yeah and so we wrote that like you know I, I just like I think he was ha- cooking dinner inside and I just like demoed the vocals and then um I'm pretty sure we used that on the final or a lot of it anyway on the final recording and then mm-hmm. I just like yeah over a couple of months I produced it in many different ways and um it ended up being like back to pretty much one of the first versions and yeah it was um, I mean it was amazing it, it was something that definitely changed my life and that mm-hmm. so many people have been like wow, people don't really write songs about re- friendships that go yeah. badly or that are toxic. And it's yeah. weird that people don't. And I guess, mm. you know, people might start doing it now. <laughs> um, and because it's so important, yeah. like it's a big, big, big part of growing up and like, you know, you experience it all the time. Yeah, I don't really know. It, it hasn't like been done that much, but mm. there you go, crocodiles. So the friends that you, well, ex-friends that you wrote it about, have they contacted you? Do you know if they've heard it? They've definitely heard it. Um, it's a, like, I don't really know how much I want to talk about it, but it's like, it's <laughs> a complicated situation. One of them is, has been a best friend of mine since I was like four years old. Wow, well, okay. Um, and, you know, he, after a while, the, the, the tricky thing is, is like, when people are really, really, like mean to you or not there for you or do Mm -hmm. things a lot of the time it can be unintentional or most of the time it's because they're going through their own stuff Mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter that they are because it still affects you like you Mm -hmm. still have to be like I can't deal with this or wow that hurt me that like you were not there Mm -hmm. the way that I would have been there for you or I had other friends who would have like bent over backwards to help me and Mm -hmm. but you know one of them who was like my my you know best friend or one of my best friends since I was like like four years old he apologized like he was like he just came and he was like I'm so sorry that I was that way and he explained you know different things and and like and I was so grateful Mm. I was like I was you know I was like yeah people make mistakes and all Mm. that matters is that you realize that you were in the wrong at the time and you did something crappy but like you know we're we're friends and we love each other and like if Mm. you can be a good friend like and treat me the way that I would treat you then like there's no reason why we can't be best friends again and, and we are really good friends now and and that was that was hard though I had yeah. kind of vowed to like not ever ever let them back into my lives again my life again and I don't really speak to the other lads um I guess it's different when someone's been your friend like your whole life yeah, yeah. he knows like everything about you, your family your setup your everything yeah. yeah and you just you know you just have to sometimes give people like the chance and I would have never gone to him and been like hey man like Mm. you know because I knew that like I had been hurt badly and and I was like if they want to be friends they know where to find me and they know exactly that you know wow we've gotten really deep here (laughs) it's heavy yeah a bit of therapy for Monday night (laughs) Uh, rolling with the theme of friendship but let's make it a bit more positive if you could pick five famous people to go on a night out with who are you picking and why wow um John Mayer, because he's hilarious and also a genius. Yeah, he really is. Oh, God, shit. Like, I'm so bad at these Would you have to keep it together, though, with John Mayer? Would you just be like, oh, my God? I just, I don't even know. <laughs> I think I just, like, I actually don't know what I do. <laughs> but I feel like I'd probably add to the list, like, I'd probably get, like, Justin Timberlake there, because I feel like he's kind of mysterious sometimes. And yeah. He's a really, really cool guy. You could ask him about the Janet Jackson situation oh, once yeah. and for all. Oh, very true. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, I, I've, I, I'm kind of like me. Like, if Michael Jackson was alive, I would definitely want to meet him because he's kind of the reason I fell in love with pop music. Mm-hmm. That's quite controversial now, but like, I feel like I still yeah. have to say it because like his music is the best music, in my opinion, that has been made in many, many years. Don't at me, by the way. Everybody has their own opinion on what's great and whatnot, <laughs> but like, I love Michael Jackson. Um, I get that. And um, I don't know. I guess like. I'd love to have Maddie from the 1975, but I think I wouldn't understand a thing he's saying because he's just like so smart, and I'm just be like, I'd just be like, man, I need to read like nine dictionaries to understand what's going on in your brain, and um, I'm definitely missing out on some people that I that I love. Um, 
I don't know. I guess like. This is a good night out so far, to be fair. This is a good night out. I feel like I should spice it up. Like, I've got like a lot of men right now, and I feel like that would be yeah. really weird. Yeah, you, know? you need, you need but some I also gals. don't know who would filter in well. Like, Tori Kelly comes to mind because I just think she's class. And yeah, I've been her, vo- her vocal every time, I'm just yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, she's yeah. just unbelievable. Is that like five? Maybe one more. Yeba, she is un- amazing. Oh, yeah, Yeba's also got... You can make music as well on this. Yeah, I mean... So you'll make the music and then go on the night out. Yeah. You don't want to do it the other way around. I don't think I'd ever want to go on a night out. If, like, I had a choice to go on a night out with these five people, though, I think I'd say no, because, like, how do you just... Like, who do you talk to? Like, you're like, so, like, you're all... You know, like, you have to just have, like, a beer with John Mayer and maybe go for a hike with Yeba and, like, maybe (laughs) go cycling with Tori and, like, do a dance lesson with Justin and, like, maybe go to church with Justin Bieber or something. I don't know, like... (laughs) You got to give oh, them their Justin individual. Oh, Justin Bieber's getting added in now. Is Bieber's he? getting oh, in there sure. too. I'm a I mean, why I'm not? It'd be be- rude to leave him out. I'm an absolute be believer. Like believer, believer. Believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. Uh, right. Let's get some questions from the chat. So, uh, Angie says, um, "Kian, how's the TikTok career going? I mean, we've spoken a little bit about it. I would say, well, <laughs> it's not too bad. Yes, it has. It's gone well, I suppose. Yeah, I love TikTok. I also, I love TikTok. <laughs> 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 I love." <laughs> I love TikTok. <laughs> I was going to say I also hate TikTok, but I love TikTok. It's a love-hate relationship. It's one of the best platforms in the world, but it's also like just so intense because it's all that's going on right now. So you're yeah. like, whoa, TikTok. Like, let's go. But yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it's just a game changer. Yeah. Uh, M says, have you ever been caught doing something you definitely shouldn't have been doing? <laughs> Well, uh, ooh, that's a straight up question. <laughs> okay, that's it's a getting straight up spicy now. Spicy. <laughs> um, have I ever been caught doing something? I mean, I always used to like, I was actually pretty good growing up, but like I would do like weird things, like sneak into people's like farms and gardens just for like the excitement of like running around or like, <laughs> or like going into like weird places and parks that are like locked just to like see them. And then like the security guard being like, hey, and you'd be like, oh, they're closed. That's <laughs> oh, probably the realize. extent. And not actually that like rebellious when it comes to like I probably am. People behind like anywhere probably like, what do you want about man? Every time you did this and that and but yeah. I those You're are filtering time. yourself in. Most it's of the times right. I'm it's not right. caught though, you know? <laughs> there you go. You that's, see, that's, that's that's the key, isn't that's it? That's the key. You know? Don't get caught, you see. <laughs> Too good for that. Uh M also has another question. What's been your most memorable gig to date? That I've attended, or I guess you can't ask back. Um, <laughs> I'm, guess, I'm guessing one of your shows. One of my shows, most memorable. Um, wow. I think like when I was in first year at a at the Royal Academy, I played in some weird gig at Camden Assembly, mm-hmm. and I probably had like three, four thousand. Luca was there playing drums. This guy plays like every instrument. Um, we were, I don't even remember what it was for, but I think I, at the time I had like three, 4,000 Instagram followers. Like I'd built a lot of stuff on like YouTube, but I was like, don't, like, I don't even know, to be honest, what, you know, I, I wasn't anything, not that I'm anything now either, but like, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, I played this show and like, it was, first of all, it was amazing because I just love playing live, like the most amazing ever. And Canada Assembly is so fun to play and, mm. There was loads of smoke, you know, they have like crazy smoke machines, so you basically can't see the audience. <laughs> and I was singing only songs that hadn't I hadn't released because I hadn't even released any music at this point. I oh, was wow. just like, you know, posting on Instagram and posting, I was going to say TikTok didn't exist, on <laughs> YouTube. And then like at one point, this like split in the kind of cloud, kind of clouds, in the clouds, <laughs> in the clouds, in the smoke. There was like a split in the smoke. And I just remember seeing these girls like singing the lyrics to my song back. And I was like... What? what? I was like, the song doesn't even, isn't even out. It's like one video on my Instagram. <laughs> it's and not I was even in, out and you can't see me really through all this smoke. Yeah, what is going on? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> and yeah, it was it was crazy because these like people who followed me on Instagram, like mm. in London, who like I'd never done a gig in London before. I was like, nobody knows who I am anywhere anyway. And I, yeah, they were there singing my song. That's and I amazing. was like, this is the most... And I got off stage and I was just like, please, can we just go straight back up? We weren't allowed. <laughs> but that's all I wanted to do. And I just remember every time I, I perform like that with an audience, I just feel that feeling of like, oh, my God, I want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And it's coming back soon. 
Yes. Oh, my God. I bet you can't wait to get back out on the road again. Now, so many talented artists are coming out of Ireland right now. Oh. Like, so, so many. many. This is where I'm going to put you on the spot and say, who should people be checking out? Uh, there's one name that always pops to mind instantly, and I, I actually don't know how to pronounce her name. You probably already know who I'm thinking about. Thinking about. Uh, <laughs> is it Luce? Luce oh, Corrigan? Luce. Luce is amazing. Luce Corrigan, oh yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I think everybody who you ever ask anything about Ireland, they're always like, Luce Corrigan. I think she, her... She just has a fantastic voice. And yeah. it's just, like, so beautiful. And I think she's such a lovely person. And, like, so humble. And, like... I Yeah. Yeah. Enough said. I think she's fantastic. There's, a, there's way too many good musicians coming out of Ireland but yeah I, I really I'm a fan of what she's doing and I've been mm -hmm. watching for a few years and it's just nice to see yeah yeah she's absolutely wicked so as we've said you've had an amazing couple of years but are you ambitious what are your like big big goals are we talking couple of Brits in the back are we talking <laughs> Grammys are we talking <clears throat> world domination what are we saying yeah I mean I don't think I'd be doing this if I didn't want to be like the biggest artist in the world so mm. It's it's weird to say that because people are like, oh, it's like, but yeah, why would I like, why would I be here if I didn't yeah. want to like absolutely dominate, you know, or you know, co-dominate music with other amazing artists and like, yeah. you know, if you open up my notes app on my phone, it's just like notes and notes of like me repeatedly typing like, I'm gonna win a Brit, I'm gonna win a Brit, I'm gonna win a Grammy, I'm gonna win best artist at the Grammys, I'm gonna do this, and like, I just try and like believe in myself as much as I can because if you're not confident, it's you just can't do it. Like you have to be. You yeah. have to be so confident and you have to keep mm -hmm. reminding yourself, like, I am good. I am really good. <laughs> like <laughs> You are really good. You can do this. It's the and I don't I actually don't think that people on the outside understand how hard it is to be an artist if you don't have that mm. attitude. Like it's it's really hard. So like people always shit on artists for being like confident or, or cocky. I think being cocky is another story, but like being confident and believing in yourself, like don't shit on artists for being that way because it's the only thing that like allows them to like see the day through and yeah, just yeah. believe in yourself and think that like yeah I'm gonna be like number one selling artist like yeah. in the world and that's mm. that's what we're here to do yeah and I don't doubt that you will be I'm excited to see you tick off all those things thank you very much for chatting to me uh, Kian so Crow taken to the scruff of the neck TV stage